Hey everyone, welcome back to the Riftsphere channel. With Plex installed, it's time to configure it. As always, we can count on trash guides for guidance. However, remember that many settings are based on personal preferences. So feel free to make changes according to your needs. In this video, we will cover the essential settings for a correctly working Plex setup. Since there are a lot of differences between the free version and the Plex Pass version, I will run them both side by side. Let us know in the comments if you are using the free or Plex Pass version. Once you access the Plex web interface and login, you should see a screen explaining how Plex works. If things look different for you, check the linked video for troubleshooting before continuing. Click the Got It button to proceed. If you're using the free version, Plex will try to sell you Plex Pass. You can dismiss the offer and sign up later if you wish. Now, you can set the name for your Plex server and decide whether to allow access from outside your home. Click Next to continue. Since we haven't added any media to our server yet, we won't create any libraries at this point. Click Next to proceed. In the following step, We'll skip the Plex app selection and click Done to finish the basic setup wizard. To access advanced settings, click on the wrench icon and select Show Advanced. Scroll down to the Settings section and click on Remote Access. Regardless of the Plex version you're using, you can enable or disable remote access. While I would suggest disabling UPnP in your router, it would automatically enable the connection for you. If UPnP is disabled and you want to access your server remotely, make sure to forward port 32400 in your router to your Unraid server. In the Plex Pass version, you can also set your upload speed. Just like in Qubit Torrent and Sab and ZBD, don't set this to your entire speed so that you can still use the internet normally. You can also limit the quality of remote streams. Click on Save Changes if needed. Let's move on to the library settings. Trash Guide suggests enabling Scan My Library automatically. This option is also the suggested way by the Star Apps creators. Since the used Notify system can only monitor a limited amount of items, I tried to disable this and rely on the Star Apps Connect with mixed results. So I suggest you enable this. If you have enabled Scan My Library automatically, it's recommended to also enable Run a Partial Scan when changes are detected, so only the changes are scanned. Enabling Empty Trash automatically after every scan can help keep your database clean by automatically removing references to deleted files. However, it's important to consider the implications. If you upgrade a file with a better version, Enabling this option may result in having to re-download posters and plot information, and the loss of watch history associated with the upgraded file. So, it's advisable to carefully evaluate your needs before deciding whether to enable this option, and I would disable it. Since we have mapped our data shares read-only, the option to allow media deletion within Plex won't have any effect. However, if you don't plan on ever deleting media from within Plex, it's best to disable this option to avoid any confusion. Disabling this option means you won't see the option to delete media directly from the Plex interface. Next we can tweak the continue watching feature. This is where the first difference between the free version and Plex Pass comes into play. As Plex Pass offers additional markers. If you are using the scanner, I recommend setting it to a lower priority to avoid interfering with streaming and overall server performance. With Plex Pass, you can take advantage of video analysis and marker creation, which allows you to skip intros and catch those 30 second fragments commonly found in out rows, similar to what Marvel does. However, since this feature requires significant computational power, I suggest checking online first to see if this information is available. Alternatively, you can choose to keep the analysis local. 
we're going to set the generate video preview thumbnails option to never. These thumbnails require substantial processing power and storage, and are only used in certain Plex apps when scrubbing through videos. For Plex Pass users, you have additional options such as setting the intro and credit markers as a task, and when media is added. Unfortunately, there isn't an option to create these markers solely when media is added. The same applies to generate chapter thumbnails. Analyze audio tracks for loudness and the Plex Pass exclusive. Analyze audio tracks for sonic features. If you don't think you'll utilize these features, you can set them to never, and you always have the flexibility to change them later. Don't forget to save your changes. Now, let's proceed to the network section. Unless you are sure about IPv6 support in your network, it's best to disable it. Keep the secure connection set to prefer to ensure compatibility with devices that may not support secure connections. At this point, we won't configure domains and certificates as our focus is on the media setup rather than security. Maintain the preferred network interface as any, since our current setup involves only one network interface. Leave the strict TLS option disabled as enabling it may restrict compatibility with certain clients. For the GDM setting, Trash Guides recommends to keep it enabled. This allows local Plex apps and servers to discover each other, which can be beneficial in case of internet connectivity issues. However, we would have to add UDP ports 32410, 32412, 32413 and 32414 to our Docker setup. So, I will be turning this off. If you're using Plex Pass, there are additional features available. You can set the number of remote streams each user can have and configure which networks are considered local or remote. If everything is functioning correctly, it's generally recommended to leave these settings empty. However, if your local machines are identified as remote, you can add your local network configuration accordingly. You can also set a maximum time before paused streams are stopped. Enable Treat 1 IP as LAN bandwidth to avoid potential issues, unless you have specific requirements that necessitate its disabling. Both versions of Plex offer a relay feature to assist when your server is inaccessible. However, keep in mind that the relay has limited bandwidth and may introduce additional complications. It's advisable to disable this feature. If you're using a reverse proxy, you can set the custom server access URL. However, we won't cover this configuration in this video. The list of IP addresses and networks that are allowed without auth setting is useful when your internet connection is down. Without an active connection, Plex won't be able to verify access. You can use the same configuration as in the Qubit Torrent setup to allow access without authentication. Keep webhooks enabled and click Save Changes to apply the network settings. Let's move on to the transcoder section. Transcoding is utilized when a client doesn't support a specific codec or to reduce the size of remote streams. The transcode quality can be set to automatic to allow Plex to determine the appropriate quality based on the client's capabilities. Specify the transcoder temporary directory as the slash transcode folder we previously mapped. For Plex Pass users, there are additional options available. You can enable HDR tone mapping, hardware acceleration when available, and hardware accelerated video encoding. Enabling these options will take advantage of the GPU you added. On both versions of Plex, you can set the maximum number of simultaneous transcodes. For now, it's recommended to keep this setting at unlimited. If you encounter issues with multiple simultaneous streams in the future, you can adjust this value accordingly. Don't forget to save the changes in the transcoder settings. Trash Guides covers the setup of libraries at this point. However, since we don't have any media yet, we'll cover library creation in later videos. And there you have it. 
Plex is now set up and configured. As Plex doesn't have a local API, all communication is handled through a token, eliminating the need to add it to flat notes. However, don't forget to add Plex to Heimdall for convenient access, and enable the auto start option on the Docker tab in Unraid. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe for more content.